so the future of MS is really bright. You know, treatment for multiple sclerosis is evolving. The landscape is, is really kind of expanding, and we're very excited for this. So when I think about the future of MS therapeutics, I kind of think about, you know, kind of a three things at least that can happen in multiple sclerosis. So there is a dysregulation of the immune system. There is demyelination and there is some neurotoxicity that we can see. So what, when we think about it, we think about a few things. We think about immune modulation, which we always do. We have now effective therapies in that particular aspect. And I, I like to think about remyelination, and this is something that we're still working on and still not yet um, you know, at the stage where we can offer our patients uh, evidence-based remyelinating agents. And the other part and the other aspect is neuroprotection. And neuroprotection is one of those things that kind of uh, help protect those neurons uh, from being damaged. So from oxidation, oxidative damage and other types of damage. So we're still also not there, but we will think about therapeutic options in the future, you know, kind of combination therapies comes to mind and combining, you know, kind of methods of looking at immune modulation plus neuroprotection plus remyelination. And now with, with also what we know about the role of viruses in multiple sclerosis, like Epstein-Barr virus is perhaps, you know, kind of something like an antiviral, maybe um, an added element to, to the treatment paradigm in the future. So when I think about the future, the landscape of treatment, I think about personalized therapy. I think about precision therapy, but I also think about combination therapy. And we are getting you know, there. I think we are getting more and more molecules that work with a way that is very unique. Um, you know, kind of when thinking about what is out in the clinical trials now, what is in the pipeline I get excited because, because we know about the BTK inhibitor, proton tyrosine kinase inhibitors. That's a major topic, right? There are several of those in phase three now. And then we talk about cellular therapies uh, also as one of the future, um, you know, kind of uh, hopes for the future when we think about multiple sclerosis treatment. So what excites me about those aspects is, is the ability to perhaps cross to the brain and perhaps bring the actual effect to the brain and modulate the immune system in the brain itself within the central nervous system. So most of the medications that we have now that are approved for use in multiple sclerosis um, exert their effect through the perif periphery in the blood, right? They affect the immune system in the blood. Um, you know, maybe some of them may cross to the brain, but we still don't know if they have an actual therapeutic effect within the brain. Um, but when we think about something like the BTK inhibitors, and what the promise is and what the you know, kind of hope is, is that they could exert an effect within the central nervous system that may be beneficial for treating multiple sclerosis. And, and that is where we kind of thinking about the future. So thinking about those BTK inhibitors, cellular therapies, combination therapy, remyelinating agents, which hopefully they can get back into uh, clinical studies. And some of them are early, early stages, but hopefully they can advance into you know more phase two, phase three studies where we can see some impact on patients. And hopefully, you know, clinical trial design is another thing that I discussed during the talk is we discussed something about um, you know, all size fit, uh, one size fit all, right? Um, and this is one of the things that we kind of often fall into here in multiple sclerosis treatment is we assume all people living with MS, you know, have very similar pathogenesis or pathology, but they may not. And, and when we do this, we kind of uh, introduce all these patients to the same molecule and, and, you know, and, and test one molecule for a group of patients that may be very heterogeneous. So the idea, can we move into what we call a precision type of clinical trials, where we have smaller number of participants, but they're very homogeneous, and we can test specific targets. And we know if this specific target worked for those patients or not. So that's something that, you know, some of the things that I've spoke about during the, the um, talk at CMSC.